Chatters, welcome back to another pin spinning video. And so since we had two pin trick suggestions involving the continuous stringless thumb around, that's what we're going to be learning today. And so for those of you who do not know what the continuous stringless thumb around is, here's a quick video of Ktrain93 doing the pin trick. And so I'll leave a link down to Ktrain93's channel down in the description below. So if you want to check out more pin tricks or pin tutorials, please feel free to click that link. And so if you want to learn the continuous thing this thumb around, you got to know a couple prerequisites before you learn this trick. So you gotta learn how to do the thumb around so that you can do the fingerless thumb around and once you learn how to do the thumb around and the fingerless thumb around you can combine those two together to do the thumb around because basically a double thumb around is when you do a thumb around into a fingerless thumb around and once you'll be able to do this you'll be able to do the continuous fingerless thumb around oh my lungs so basically what i said is you gotta learn how to do the double thumb around and i have a video of me learning the double thumb around and i'll leave it up here for you to click if you want to check out that video and so once when you're able to do the double thumb around all you have to do is then do add a fingerless thumb around to it and then from there you just keep doing the fingerless thumb around and eventually you'll basically be doing the continuous fingerless thumb around. Sounds easy right? And I know I thought this when I first saw the pen trick, the continuous fingerless thumb around. I was like oh so all you do is a double thumb around and you just add fingerless thumb around to it? And uh, yeah, I was wrong. It's actually a lot harder than it looks. And so in these next couple of clips, you'll see me learning how to do the continuous fingerless thumb around. So it's my first attempt. Starting off, I didn't do anything too fancy. All I did was do a double thumb around and I tried to add a fingerless thumb around to it. And it wasn't so easy as I thought because when you're starting off doing the double thumb around and you're adding the fingerless thumb around, it's easier because you're starting off at a stable base because you're holding the pin. And then from there, when you're spinning the thumb around, you just add a fingerless thumb around to it which is easier but for me my fingerless thumb around was inconsistent after the thumb around and so adding a fingerless thumb around to a fingerless thumb around that's inconsistent is really difficult and I spent a while trying to do this. And so after about 6 hours there was no progress whatsoever. I continued to be in the same stuck position not knowing how to add on this extra fingerless thumb around and so like within these six hours I learned a couple of things and the first thing that I learned is how important it is for you to have the double thumb around down to the mastery level I'm talking like when you're doing the double thumb around it's like perfect every single time so after you do the thumb around it's usually ending up in somewhere around this position where you hold near the bottom part of your pin and most of the weight is on the outside which is over here and this is the same thing that happens when you do the fingerless thumb around and when you're trying to do the continuous fingerless thumb around when you're doing the thumb around or after you finish doing the double thumb around which is a thumb around and then after that a fingerless thumb around it will be ending up right here what you want to do is you actually want to reach the top portion somewhere around here with your pin to actually do another fingerless thumb around right but if you're holding down here or very near the tips right here it will be very difficult for you to do and this is one of the reasons why it's so important for you to get the double thumb around down consistently and not only that, being able to actually catch the pin somewhere roughly about right here near the middle so that way you could actually just reach right here with the pin to continue the fingerless thumb around. And this was one of the things that I struggled doing. And the second thing that I learned is like within these 6 hours of actually practicing for the fingerless or continuous fingerless thumb around, I didn't gain any progress whatsoever at least in my opinion. And so basically what that means is I'm in deep sh um, I'm in trouble. And so my logic is like when you're doing the continuous fingerless thumb around, you kind of have to do the double thumb around, right? And so I was like, I'll just practice the double thumb around while I'm trying to do the continuous fingerless thumb around. And after so many tries, you'll just be practicing and getting better at the, the, uh, the double thumb around and the continuous fingerless thumb around, right? And so I wouldn't recommend you doing this at all because to me, I feel like when you're trying to practice a skill, you should isolate that one skill outside of everything else and just focus on that so you can gain a lot of attention for it. And so this is my approach to learning like majority of things in general, except this time though. And so I went back and continued to practice a little bit more and after about an hour passed, nothing happened. It I basically stayed still and there was no progress at all. And it's been a total of roughly about 7 hours at this point and I was beginning to feel very very frustrated because I never experienced any pin trick like this before where I'm practicing for 7 hours straight and I didn't get any type of understanding or hints or any idea on how to actually begin to start learning this pin trick. And so I 
just felt like I got to start adjusting some small things here and there to see if it'll help. So the first thing I try to adjust is the lift with my wrist, right? And so this will give a pin a slight bounce to it. And I find that the best time for you to do this lift of your wrist is when the center of gravity of the pin, which is indicated by this line right here, gets somewhere right here between your thumb flap. And from there, you lift your wrist and then the pin will bounce up. And what happens is to me, what I think happens, it gives time for your thumb to actually readjust itself so the pin could actually spin around your thumb to do the fingerless thumb round. Or it could just be that it actually readjusts the pin. Like so when the pin spins about like right here and you catch it right here, it readjusts the pin slightly to where it gets more towards the center so you can catch it like this. But I'm not too sure what the bounce does, but it seems to make the pin uh, when doing the double thumb round and actually adding the fingerless thumb round a little bit smoother and i'm pretty sure you're wondering like does it really help with the bounce well i'll leave that up to you to decide because as i went back and started to practice doing the lift or the raise of my hand to get the pin to bounce it was a little bit tricky at first because i'm not used to doing this but eventually as i got more comfortable with this bounce i managed to catch it for the first time So another thing that I adjust was how I hold the pin or where I hold the pin actually. So some could hold right here when you're doing the thumb round, some hold right here. I like to hold it right here where my index is above the center of gravity of my pin and my index. I mean my middle finger is below my center of gravity and I just do a thumb around here. And also I change the angles of the pin so basically I could hold it more horizontally from my uh, to my hand or parallel to the ground right here. Or some, and then I just slowly tilt the pen to where I find it most comfortable. And these are the small things that I continue to adjust as I practice the continuous fingerless thumb around. And so as the next day rolled by, I decided to practice some more of these small adjustments and tweak and trying to learn how to do the continuous fingerless thumb around. And as I was getting more familiar with these tweaks, I got a really close call in actually doing an additional fingerless thumb around after the double thumb around but I didn't and I failed but eventually I got an additional fingerless thumb around in again with these tweaks and right when I was about to stop for the day I managed to get it again and so even with all of the tweaks and small adjustment that I did to try to help me learn the continuous fingerless thumb around it didn't help much for me at least that's how I feel and so the total amount of time that passed was 21 hours and 34 minutes and I dropped the pin a total of 63,000 times or roughly about 63,000 times. And so I really hate to do this like me leaving a video of like a cliffhanger type of thing for you. But so far I couldn't learn how to do the continuous fingers thumb around yet. And I'll continue to practice this pin trick until I'll be able to get it down. And until then you could think of this video like a part one out of a part two type of video and so if you enjoyed the video please make sure you show it by hitting that like and subscribe button and if you know how to do the continuous fingerless thumb around please leave a comment down below on tips and advice that you can give me so that it will help me learn how to do the trick faster and for those who are also struggling out there with learning this trick maybe your comments can actually help like always thanks for watching and until next time